Howdy. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at an elephant robotics uh, actual robot. So that's kind of surprising given the fact that the first video that we made on this channel was talking about uh, a bad experience I had with them. So I will give them credit where credit's due and uh, say that I am very impressed that a company was willing to give it another shot, especially after that kind of video in which I had, uh, to quite describe it, a horrible experience with them. Uh, they apologized, they came back and they said they want to try again with another video that they've got their act together and I respect that tremendously. Um, usually when you make one of those videos, we know bad experience, companies don't want to deal with you anymore. So for them to come back and say, hey, give us another shot, we've changed. Um, I respect that tremendously. Also, I did just deal with one person and one person does not represent an entire company. Um, so I think that's credit where credit's due. So right here we have, I believe this is the My Pulitzer, My Cobot Pulitzer, I believe. Um, this is the, a much different design robotic arm. It looks a little bit different. So basically it sits down like that. You've got a little bit of a screen there and the robot arm sits like that. This I don't believe moves. So it always stays flat. That's actually really cool. Um, probably don't want to tear up the motors. I should be careful. Um, but yeah, so overall, no issues there. Manufactured somewhat recently, so hopefully it's not uh, going to be broken like the last one. So you've got your cables. And I have an EU charging brick. Um, I will have to contact them because I don't... There's no way I'm going to find an 8.4 volt output power brick. 9 volts, maybe. But like, you know if it's 8.4 volts, you know, you know you're gonna... You know that's go fried if you go 9 volts. And since I had a lot an issue with the last time with something not working, and they're like, oh, maybe you fried it. Why is this so difficult to get off? Why in the world is this so difficult? It's like so weird, you just, you can peel it off. Sorry, foam, foam is what we review on this channel, guys. What am I talking about? Okay, there's that. With the USB, with the, sorry, with the wrong power brick. Um, I'm not gonna risk it for the biscuit. We're gonna try to get them to send me a different one, okay. Next up, we have this acrylic sheet right here, which I believe, this is the AI kit. So this is what everything I believe fits into. And then finally we have the, the big, big boy stuff. We have the, almost everything else. So this is an AI kit. So we've got some carbon fiber rods. So pretty cool there. Also, I believe another carbon fiber rod. So I my brother has always been saying he wants carbon fiber. Um, that's carbon fiber. Also, let's see, we have some boxes that I'm sure I'll fit into here. We have like trash cans, little itsy bitsy trash cans. Not what I would expect from a little kit like that. Okay. It's like, it's, it's little weird things. I'm not, oh well. You have like a motorized top here. This is a camera. It's a camera, okay. Acrylic bottom piece with stuff that I believe you punch out. I'm not gonna do that just yet. Looks like a base for it. A different base, it seems. More stacks of stuff. More base pieces. Ah, the suction kit. Okay. Bricks. So sadly, I can't actually get any farther than this in the video because I need a different power brick. So uh, that's been the unboxing. I'll wait for them to get me back to me with what to do about that. Welcome back. It's actually been quite a few months since I've started this review. A lot of things have happened in that time. We've gone through and we've uh, got the different power cord, um, which ended up just being a 12 volt power cord. Anyway, let's start from the beginning. So I've had my fair bit of time to test this. Um, and I think the focus of my review is going to be whether or not different parts of this I feel are worth it. Um, also, in addition, um, I had some interesting experiences with the power cord. Um, basically, the power cord that it came with, of course, is an EU version, which is understandable, they told me that. Um, so 
I was like, hey, you know, the power cord that I have, at least on the side here, it says that it's spec'd out for 9 volts. And uh, when I emailed or contacted them or whatever, they said that, it, you know, they sent me a 12 volt cable. And I was like, well, I have 12 volt cables. I was concerned about the 9 point something. Let's see. 8.4 volts. Sorry, on the side. And uh, I was concerned about that. And I just wanted to make sure that that was, you know, acceptable or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. So I had a 12 volt and they sent me a 12 volt. And it turns out all I needed was a 12 volt. So really a time wasted there. Um, but I mean, arguably that shouldn't be an issue you should have. You should get the right adapter out of the thing. Where everything comes into play is I've been testing with a lot of these things. So this is both the AI kit and the actual My Pulitzer. I think the first thing I want to talk about is the My Pulitzer is, I mean, pretty standard. Um, it's pretty nice. This is the M5 stack, I believe as well. Basically this whole little arm right here, you can program, you can do a lot of things. Um, you can plug in different modules, you can expand off of it. A lot of things that I've tried and done. Honestly, for the robot arm, I think this comes in at like $500. Um, there's comparatively to this other stuff that we've looked at, whether or not that be the my Cobot Pi versions or the six axis version of this. Um, of course, this is slightly more limited in those aspects, but then again, it can carry more. Um, also, I'm trying to remember what it's called. We've looked at other things around like $800, $900 that are kind of like a complete kit that have laser engravers, 3D printers, take advantage of that. Well, technically you probably could set this up as a 3D printer. Um, I don't particularly think that this is um, meant for that. This is more of, I wanna say like a demo or something that you could do kind of me menial tasks maybe or something that is not particularly heavy. Now, I think the weight limit's like 300 grams. So it's not going to be able to lift anything really meaningful. And also it is rather small. So I would class this more as the recreational users or someone that's trying to, you know, put this in a classroom. I find difficulty finding anything in like a real professional environment, um, as in like a working environment. Um, I feel like this is more of a classroom and a learning tool. Um, I really struggled to find where it was meant to be. Um, and I think that's something that I really struggle with and I don't know if I feel depth or in my depth to say, um, but I just felt like this was how this is situated, how this is like designed, like trash cans and stuff. Felt like it was more of a, I want to say like a kid's toy, um, but the experience of trying to get this working and get everything working together was not particularly a kid's level of situation. Now, yes, they have, you know, the scratch blocks. I want to call them that because they're basically just the scratch blocks and they're blocks that you hook together and that's how you program this. And that's great. It works great. But like getting to that point where everything is working great, all that set up and all that kind of, it doesn't work out of the box. You have to sit down with it you have to mess with it, you have to troubleshoot it, and all those things are not something a kid is going to want to do when they get this. And the reason why I say it's a kid is because I really struggle with the target of who this is for. Like this just seems such of a kid's toy or something that you're putting in an environment, an academic environment, where you're trying to teach somebody about programming, which I think is a valid use for this, this is great. Um, I just think that it's really kind of troublesome if you don't have, I mean, a, a teacher, professor, sitting down and setting everything up for you. Because once you get to the point where everything is working and you're just slapping on blocks and stuff and getting into programming that way, it works great. So that's the My Pulitzer. Next up is the AI kit. And what really, really made me frustrated about this AI kit is that a couple of my complaints are quite simply that this is $400, at least on the time of this recording this on their website. And $400 gets you a, basically a USB webcam. And of course, I think maybe some attachments, um, this suction attachment. Suction attachment you can buy separately. I mean, not the big deal. Um, but the biggest thing I was excited for was this, this AI attachment or this AI kit was supposed to allow you to go through and autonomously select blocks, move things over, pick up things, all that, which is great. And that is what it is doing and what it can do. But the way that they did this kind of makes makes less sense. So previously on the channel, um, we've had experiences with the My Cobalt Pi, which is basically a Raspberry Pi inside of one of these instead of the M5 stack. And that basically had USB ports in it. And so you would plug in the AI kit's webcam and Yes, it's got the little holes, the Lego brick holes for the camera mount, so you can put the camera right there. But 
They even have like the, the arms you can mount the camera overhead and then have the robot arm work. But all this really is is a webcam. And the sad part is it just plugs into your computer. It doesn't plug into the robot arm itself. So you still need a whole nother computer to make this run basically, the AI kit run with the My Pulitzer. And I just felt that like, why would someone, so so basically if you wanted to do the same level of thing, if you wanted to do the AI kit and you wanted to have that kind of experience with autonomously picking and moving blocks and detecting colors, you could set up a camera, you could put it overhead, you could get some other wooden blocks on a kit that's not five, $400 and move those around and do such. I mean, sure, this is nice and this fits nice and this is cut for it. Sure. Like, oh yes, I'm going to show kids how to put things in the trash and color code trash things or sort things by color using trash cans. And you're going to say that everything but the robot arm, all this plastic is $400. I mean, yeah, the webcam, maybe the suction cup, maybe that's like, you know, $50, $100. I mean, this is a really honestly lower quality webcam but just like a low resolution webcam that just basically that's all it is that plugs in your computer and then your computer tells the robot arm where to go i just really think that this my pulitzer at least would have been better sued by having the raspberry pi and directly going into there because i feel like it would be more useful as a demo when you could show hey i'm just have everything hooked up to the the robot arm itself and it's doing all this in an enclosed system because when you get to the point where you're already connecting your computer then like this just becomes a set of motors that you move and you have a camera that's talking to a computer and a bunch of motors that are talking to a computer. It, it, it just takes away from the magic of having everything in an enclosed system. So I struggle while I think everything here is high quality. I can't justify that price tag of $400 for this kit. And I mean, I know that if you take, there's also something if you buy it like a Black Friday sale or something, it's like $850 for both the arm and the kit, which I think puts, if we were to just say the arm's like $400 and the kit's still $400. I mean, like you could 3D print all this, put the stickers on here. Like there's nothing unique to the ecosystem. Like by buying this kit, you're not getting a, a webcam that's uniquely compatible and fits in a proprietary slot on the thing to make it automatically detect things out of the box. And I guess, like with your expectation with paying so much for this robot arm, you would expect that A, it would work out of the box and B, it'd be useful. So the other thing I want to point out too is I have a background in embedded systems. Um, I'm doing currently doing my master's in embedded systems. I'm taking master's level classes on um, redundant systems, embedded systems, those kind of things. And... This was a challenge for me to set up just because of not so much the, I understand the hardware. It's just the way that the software is done, the way that the documentation is done becomes very difficult. And I would say that if I was getting frustrated finding things and going back and forth, I think the average user would experience something on that similar department is that they, if someone like a professor or a teacher, like a programming teacher is not going to have the background, that level of background. And they're going to get frustrated pretty quickly when things are not, I want to say, easy out of the box. So my recommendations for product-wise is two things. Number one, I want to point out two things. Number one, I want to thank them for uh, willing to send me another product after the previous really bad uh, experience I had with them. And the second thing I want to say is these are not problems that I want to say I mean, yeah, the AI, I start with the AI, the value of the AI kit. Ease of build, like getting everything set up and troubleshooting is just so, something that can be alleviated with, I want to say more effort on the software side. Because for me, I found the software was buggy. I found that the software that I have to hook up to my laptop often times didn't work. And it's just difficult for me. I can only imagine for the end user. So to alleviate the experience. And the other thing I want to say too is I don't have really anything to compare this to. I don't, I mean, yeah, I have like a 3D printer kind of thing that I've messed with before that um, the Rotrix Dex arm, I think it was what it's called, but that's not really this. That was like a 3D printer and that was more of a maker tool. This is, I want to say more of a, it's not a gimmick, but it's more of a demo, if that makes sense. Something you demo, you'd show features, you teach kids with, and it's just a different thing. So I don't really have anything to compare it to. I would just tell you that it's probably a really big learning curve.
and just be aware of that when you buy that. But that concludes my review. Um, in conclusion, the arm itself, I mean, not not much to complain about. Maybe the dexterity, but that's what you get for paying this for getting this one over the the six axis one. The AI kit, I short like anything other than this, you could basically do on your own, make your own for probably like a fourth of the price, a third of the price. Um, so I struggle with the value proposition of the AI kit specifically. But um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Check out the channel for other cool related reviews, and see you guys next time.